This face-to-camera introduction is, of course, always the last thing I do as I assemble such videos as these. And as I put my finishing touches on this one, I find myself in a strange frame of mind. I have not been outside my house in almost a week, so my work on this quartet was mostly done several days ago and it's just languished in a folder as I've applied myself full tilt to some video lectures to get my classes through the remainder of their spring semester. That's proving to be a much more time-consuming process than I had anticipated, but that huge temporal expenditure notwithstanding, I'd still have had plenty of time to finish my work on this video by at least a couple of days ago. The truth is that I simply haven't been able to muster the will to finish this project. The world has changed so much during the past week and is going to change so much more, so radically in the direction of the unlivable, that I hardly see any point in finishing this and posting it. To what end? At a time like this, who's going to want to spend a half hour with something completely irrelevant to just about anything you can name? I hardly ever know what to say about the music anyway, and I often cringe when I return to videos that I posted months ago and hear just how little I have to say and how many words I spill saying it. So I'm just going to race through a superficial description and wrap this up. I'll just have to hope that my running commentary is useful enough to you to make your watching it worthwhile. First movement, an almost obsessively monothematic sonatiform movement that includes bold harmonic experiments involving movement through a tritone's worth of keys and a thoroughly reorganized recap with some unexpectedly rigorous canonic counterpoint and an interpolated development of theme 2A, and on and on. The music's the thing, and the sooner we get to it, the better. Second movement has the feel of a slow waltz in G major. Lots of imaginative sharing of motives among themes and a couple of really bold harmonic experiments which I won't try to describe in advance. Let's just say that tritone relationships are, again, a defining feature. This movement is magical. Third movement, with my blower going, but who cares? A regal C major minuet worked out to unusual length and furnished with a trio whose harmonic relationship to the minuet is simply breathtaking. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Fourth movement, a fast-paced, sonata-form movement chock-full of invention and including some gypsy-flavored bagpipe music and a dizzying double fugue. There, that's enough. The Kodai Quartet is responsible for this recording, available on the Noxus label. Good luck, everyone. I'm probably done here since I think it's highly doubtful that anyone on the planet is going to be listening to Joseph Haydn's music within a week or so. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Try to stay well as long as you can.
Thank you.